I've made three shades of uh, blue-grey, um, a light, a middle and a dark. They all look the same here. And I've got three brushes, each with a mix on the brush. I've been trying to make uh, graduations of tone from light to dark without leaving, without creating brush marks. You can try this on dry and this is on a damped surface. The damped surface is possibly slightly better for this. So I'd like to try and create the illusion of this cup and saucer being uh, three-dimensional. And I'm going to first of all damp the interior here carefully. Um, let's see if I can get this um, mixture to spread and diffuse without lines. So I'm starting with the the lighter mixture here, roughly a third, so be slightly more. But this was not very wet to start with, um, so I've got the middle tone, which I'm going to put in, start over here, and work into the light and just let that go and let it spread, let the water do the work and this lower bit here just carefully altering the angle of the brush let's take this over a little bit it's important to leave that alone, that area not to be tempted to brush it too much so the darkest value I've got is in here let's see if I can make that it's more accurate to this edge because the only white I have is going to be the white of the paper. Just going to correct that drawing a little bit. Get rid of the excess water and see if I can lead that across. And just let the let the pressure go on the brush so that this um, the colours or the values blend without. Um, brush marks. That's the aim. So the opposite thing is happening on the exterior of the teacup and that, that's a bigger area so it's, this is wetting, not very wet. So if I have a jar of water and I'm taking a little bit of water on the brush and doing that, getting rid of the excess of water each time. So it's, it's more like um, damping anyway, it's not flooding with water, that's important. So controlled wetting. See if I can make this all wet. And just notice that shine on the surface. I'm hoping. Yes, so there's a little sheen on the surface there where that's been wetted. And I go back to the lighter value. First, it's going to be on the opposite side here. Again, using different angles of the brush. So, brush upright is more precise. Brush at an angle is better for putting down colour. So, this is a mixture of ultramarine, ochre, and crimson. Again, about it's about halfway across and a switch. So there is a window of time opportunity with this where the surface of the paper stays wet just for long enough and the colour will run or blend in this smoky way into one another. That's the middle one. Let's see if I can make that come down to there. So it's, that's roughly about where I would like that to be. Hmm. Yep. I'm going to change that for the darker one and start over here. Careful with the brush, painting the edge. So this requires the brush to be upright to get right into that corner with the dark colour.
a little bit of an overlap there. And then try and fade that out in a sort of curved way, so it's a little bit of an angle there. And the base of the cup is just possibly slightly darker. I've got a little bit of an overlap on that edge on the left. Can be damp brush taken away, I hope. Probably better to do that one dry though. Just press the light. Yeah. I'm going to leave that till it's dried. So the handle, I don't think I would need to, um, this should have dried by now, or dried more. I want to lead that up into light. Let's bring that in a bit more. Just use a damp clean brush to soften that edge. This is where it's going to be darkest. Shouldn't be a line there. Should have looked at that more carefully. Take that away. So darkest value in the handle up here. Then a mid-tone, start down here and just fade that up into the dark. And go for the lightest value on the lower part here. Just let those merge, very little brushing involved. Um, light, middle, dark, keeping those brushes in order. And any tidying up, I'll probably do that a bit later with the um, clean brush. So we're going to wet this area of the saucer. Try and wet it without, yeah, that hasn't fully dried yet. That's a bit risky before that has dried. Let's leave that for a minute and wet the area behind this and, yeah, let's wet this area behind here. So one of the principal um, devices in painting in art history is the use of light against dark. Before colour was available, before bright colours existed, artists like Rembrandt and Caravaggio used contrast to dramatise their subjects, their paintings. So this dark colour behind here, if I put this on, I can get it to go on onto damp and just leave a foggy edge there. That's my idea of a lost edge. So I have to keep going back and loading the brush. And it's come down to about there. Hope that bit's dry. So this rim I'm hoping will stand out as being lighter against darker background. 
That's a little darker. And darker. Just let that go a bit. So steady hand. Brush held upright. Can I get that to go around? And follow that line. If this starts to dry, then uh, I would we re wet it. So I'm hoping this will come down to an edge against this um, handle. Somewhere here. And that's another careful bit of painting. On the edge of the handle. It should be level both sides, so that should be level, level along there. Again, that's still a bit of a lost edge. Let's just make that damp there, so it's still a, an edge that sort of disappears a bit. And this is still wet, but it's drying out quite fast, so Wet that again, again with the dark colour, mix lots of merino and crimson. I'm having to mix up more of it, but that shouldn't, you know, I can hit something like it. It doesn't matter if the colour varies a little bit. Try that. And let it spread. So I'm not going to brush that too much. I'll keep that down there somewhere. And I just like to get this little bit in here, a light against dark. Let that spread. Damp brush. Get rid of the excess water. Blur that edge. Narrow it a little bit so that's a lost edge and that also becomes a lost edge. Let's blur this away a little bit. I'm going to try and leave one of the one of the devices in watercolour painting is leaving a hairline gap and that's what I'm trying to do here is leaving a hairline gap to make shadow from the cup and saucer. Waiting for this to dry here. So this will be shadow cast by the cup and saucer on the left, something like that. Wet brush, middle tone, so that's the middle grey. I'll try and make some shadow. Again, this is all a bit theoretical. Can I make that shadow look like it's just just soft light, not a thing a shadow. So it's just an effect of light. So it's got to be slightly blurred. Make it a bit darker in there. But that will be a sharp edge, just there. Bit more grey. Blurred edge. Let the water blend that. Let's try and lose that edge with a clean brush. So this will be light over here, all of this bit here perhaps. Blur that. And the lightest of light greys, so that could have a little bit of value on it. I 
That's really to bring out this some of this edge here. Let's see if I can do that. Wet the brush and just lose lose the um, edge of that. Right. So this cup and saucer. This saucer has maybe got a shadow and a bit of a lip. Again, it's just wetting the surface of the paper, trying to prepare it for mid-tone. So that might be around here. I'll get rid of that one. So what I'm doing when I'm doing that is getting rid of excess colour like that on a piece of tissue. Let's see if I can bring that round. Keep the drawing idea of the ellipse and again light against dark. Can I use light against dark with this mid-tone and then just sort of fade that out a bit? Maybe a tiny bit there. Take this round. Think of that sort of lip there. Maybe as being not quite such a sharp edge but still noticeable. So that's the mid-tone again, just making that, it's preparing that surface and it's going to be darker. Yeah, a little bit darker here with the cast shadow from the cup on the saucer. Just bring that round. Something there, greasy mark. Take this edge away. And just create a little bit of light in there, because otherwise that's rather similar. and blur this edge so that becomes lost. Let's try and bring that lip again, Look a bit darker there. And soften some of these other edges, so soften that a little bit. That should be uh, possibly slightly darker here on this base of the cup now that has dried. And just blur that in here. So some of these effects in watercolour are a little hard to um, control because the nature of watercolour just tends to run a bit. It's all about the degree of wetness. And the last thing I would do was would put in a bit of shadow on this uh, rim here. But we really need to wait a little while before doing that because of the danger of this running. So I'm, yeah, let's try that coming right here and then running off this bit here, just blurring that outwards. Still rather damp over there, and that's where I've got to try and time this. See if I can do a little bit of lifting out on the rim. See if I can take that away. So these colours, ultramarine and ochre mostly, with a little crimson, should lift relatively easily. So that's lifting. Yep, that is lifting. Press down. So by lifting, we can tidy up some of these edges. Take that away. And this has dried a bit more, but still not very dry. 
on this edge. Let's see if I can make that. bit darker there. Just best on on dry, on completely on dry this. Hold the brush upright, that will give the minimum contact of the brush with the paper. Let's see if I can run that round. It's typical of watercolour to be drawing and painting at the same time. I'm just going to drop some colour in there, little spots of it, which we should flow along that wetted surface. And there. So it's a simple subject, really, a cup and saucer. However, it does present certain challenges in watercolour. And I've tried for as far as possible to create light against dark, light against dark, light against dark, and here light against dark. So just using the paper as a third colour value and investigating a little bit the theory that sharp edges attract the attention and soft edges don't. They go away visually. So hoping we'll have a go at that soon.